from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and the Cube's ecosystem partners. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cube here in Orlando, Florida, for our live coverage of Cisco Live. 2018 North America. This is the big show. We were at Cisco Live in Europe recently. Uh, this is the big show of Cisco. They bring out all the heavy hitters. The CEO on stage just had the keynote. I'm here for the next three days with Stu Miniman, my co-host on theCUBE as usual, but also, you know, also Wikibon analyst as well as among other things. Stu, great to see you. Great to be in Orlando in the summer. It's kind of hot and sticky outside, but cool in here. Cisco with the massive uh, show here, huge in size. Our first Cisco Live. Yeah, well, John, last time you and I traveled for an event together, uh, it was Cisco Live Barcelona. So, uh, you know, yes, it's first time I've been to a Cisco Live US since 2009, which uh, was before, uh, before the queue, before I did, joined the team here. Uh, it's massive, John. I mean, the amount of people here, the Orlando Convention Center, not exactly my favorite, uh, just because it's sprawling, but you need uh, a facility of this side, and it's even overflowing it to get this. Somewhere between 25 and 30,000 people here, uh, you know, so much that we're going to dig into in the next three yeah. days. So let's just run down the keynote from the CEO from Cisco, laid out um, an impressive um, set of content. One, the light show, to kick it off, I'd probably say it was one of the best I've seen. The music was perfectly timed with the light show. Uh, you got a lot of props from the, from the crowd. But really laid out the future of Cisco by looking back at the past and all the accomplishments Cisco's had, and then laid out the new network, and we'll cover that in depth. And then also the surprise guest partner on stage, Diane Green, the CEO of Google Cloud. Clearly Cisco talking multi-cloud. They talked about this new network where protect everything, you know, use predictive, all kinds of technologies. How do you make cloud work without disrupting operations was the theme. Interesting to hear Diane Green from, uh, from Google Cloud um, kind of talk about, because she's really kind of a CTO, CEO type, really talking about the tech speeds and feeds. Uh, and then obviously DevNet uh, content at, towards the end, where DevNet um, is the developer program, and DevNet create the cloud native. Really growing in size, over a half a million registered developers, and growing points to the success of the DevNet program that brings on-premise and cloud native together. DevNet proper, DevNet create, which is the cloud native. That's the big news. Uh, in other uh, industry news today, Cohesity announced a $250 million funding round, Series D, oversubscribed. Cisco Investments, one of the um, investors, uh, but one with HPE uh, as well, and Sequoia Capital, et cetera, et cetera, shows that the market is heating up for cloud scale. And I bring up Cohesity, Stu, because you know, we're going to have the CMO on tomorrow, but this kind of points to the whole theme of Chuck Robbins' keynote, and I want to get your analysis. Cloud scale and the threats on the security side has changed the game. Now, we've covered the perimeter's dead for years. This is now a call to action for all the engineers and the CNEs and all the people in the Cisco engineering and customer community, like, look at the old way's over. The new way has to be established, it has to be scalable, it has to be cloud supporting. What's your analysis? Yeah, so, so first I wanted to step back for a second because it, my compare contrast of the last time we were at Cisco Live in Barcelona, Rowan Trollope really talked a lot about the future. He said 2050 is right around the corner. The future of Cisco is as a software company. Chuck Robbins, on the other hand, looked actually backwards for a little bit. He said, let's talk about what we have done for the last 10, 20, and 30 years together, really calling out the, the community, uh, what we've always used to talk about. You know, there's the army of CCIEs. Right, right past us here, they've got a timeline talking about 25 years of CCIEs and the tens of thousands that are certified. Uh, they, that their whole careers, John, is about networking. Um, and then we, we kind of merge in a little bit. What, what do we talk about, you know, what is, the new network, uh, a term we've heard a bunch. Uh, the, the, the case that Cisco makes is that in this new world, you know, cloud, software, applications, they have an important piece to play, and we really think they do. Networking, obviously, critically important. Security, top of mind, happening at the board level. And Cisco, they highlighted a lot of the acquisitions they've made talked about kind of this new army. You pointed out rightly uh, the developer area, which we're here in the DevNet zone, is really the, the hot topic. Over 500,000 developers registered on the platform yeah. that they have here. That's big news. We've looked at so many of the big companies. Oh, you know, 
developers, 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 it's a hot topic, it's something they want to do, but they don't have a lot of success in bringing them on board. Susie Wee and the DevNet team's done a really good job moving that forward to happen, you know, a, a really groundswell of activity uh, to get people involved, uh, you know, happening all behind us here. And you know, Cisco, obviously, uh, Chuck Robbs also pointed out that they've been looking, uh, doing a lot of work over the past 12 months, um, trying to be modernized, getting this new way established. Uh, a lot of press, a lot of analysts like to throw darts at uh, these big enterprise companies that are transforming. We've seen some critical analysis on Cisco. We've seen critical analysis on VMware in the past. If you go back five years and look at, say, VMware and, say, Cisco, you know, these guys are out of touch. This is some of the pundits were saying things like that. If you look at what Cisco's doing, this is now my opinion I want to get your reaction to, is that Cisco has essentially pulled off a VMware-like move, and that is, is that VMware has successfully looked at their core company and said, you know what, we don't want to do vCloud Air. We understand our customers, their operations guys, they're going to the cloud, they kind of shut that down and re-pivot the vCloud Air, go to the, do the deal with Amazon Web Services, they'll probably do other deals with Azure and other clouds. VMware's earnings are booming, their software-defined data center bet paying off, so those architectural things that don't look immediate, are reaping rewards for, say, VMware. I see Cisco in the same boat. You're seeing what they've done. They're trying to fix that collaboration piece, which I, you know, is a little about experiences, but the core business, the security threats, running networks, networks having policy, and with Kubernetes and Istio, Diane Green's point, that kind of brings a critical architectural components to you that really could propel Cisco. Do you, what do you, what's your uh, reaction to that? Uh, do you think that's on, spot on? Do you think it's, BS, what's your thoughts? So, John, VMware and Cisco both failed at cloud. Let, let's put it out there, vCloud Air failed. VMware went through a couple of iterations, now their partnership with, v, with Amazon has reinvigorated them, and absolutely, VMware also partnering, uh, you know, big time with Google Cloud. Everybody that has an enterprise player is trying to, you know, partner with Google Cloud. Cisco has a long history of good partnerships, but from a cloud standpoint, they, you know, we, we talked to them for a few years about you know, the inter-cloud, they're doing this all thing. It was muddy, people didn't understand it, and you know, it, it is dead. So Cisco refocusing on partnerships. Google, good one to start with, absolutely. You know, Diane Green, I think, salivating up on stage, seeing 25,000 know, enterprise customers here that she wants to use her cloud. Uh, the, the, the quick poll the audience said, oh, you know, maybe about 20% of them are using Kubernetes. John, you were just at the, you know, the Kubernetes show in Copenhagen. It tends to still be the early adopters out there. Yeah. It, it's not something that is, you know, everybody is doing yet, but Istio, Kubernetes, you know, Cisco has a place there. They can ride that wave. Partnerships, good to see them with Google. They absolutely are with AWS also. Uh, you and I did interviews with App Dynamics and some of the other Cisco folks at reInvent yeah. in the past. Uh, and you know, Microsoft is one that's going to play across all those well, environments. Well, so, too, you know, lot, lots of things to do in the cloud. Let's unpack that because let's kind of um, extract a signal there because what's the issue is, is that the Cisco ecosystem lags early adopters because they're too busy running, running networks. And anyone who runs networks knows this is critical mission, some critical stuff. Operational support, again, the security things, or threats are there. But if you look at moving up the stack, which has always been Cisco's goal, how do they, how can we move up the stack? And there's been an internal generational shift that's always been inside Cisco. When to move up the stack, how to move up the stack. I see clear visibility now with Istio and Kubernetes and Istio and containers as the Cisco guys to bring all the goodness of networking, policy, you know, quality of service, these kinds of things, security, up to the app layer with Kubernetes. I think that that's lagging, mainly because the early adopters got to set the table, but a natural progression for Cisco um, customers to move there. Now, Google Cloud is interesting, right, because Diane Green, Talking about containers and Kubernetes, they have Istio, that's their project. And there's also you know, Kube, Kubeflow, Kubeflow, amongst other things. But if you look at Amazon, they have a Kubernetes engine, just started shipping, that was announced I think last week or the week before. Diane Green's main pitch to the audience was this. You got to go to the cloud without disrupting your op operations, but yet being disrupted with new technologies. Her premise is, she says, quote, keep doing what you're doing while introducing new mind-blowing things. I think, and I love that little slang, it's kind of a Silicon Valley vibe to it, mind-blowing um, uh, things means um, machine learning, AI, things that Cisco wants to introduce as services, okay, to the cloud to help Cisco customers move to the next level. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, John, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, Cisco, 
you know, really moving beyond just the network. Absolutely, they're, they're going up the uh, up the stack. What I would say is, when we when we dealt with virtualization, John, it took us about almost ten years to fix storage and networking. And storage got fixed a little bit before networking. This whole container and cloud native space, networking is up there, solving the issues a little bit faster than it did uh, back in back in the VM days. Um, Diane, you know, really understands this piece too. And uh, Cisco, in many ways, felt that they stumbled a little bit. They could have bought VMware back in the day, um, and they didn't. Of course, EMC picked that one up. Uh, so when containers came around, Cisco knew that there was a new wave coming. They're, they're ready, they're, they're going after it, and they're trying to position themselves uh, to, to you know, be strategic in that next era. You talked to a lot of practitioners too. I want to get your thoughts and reaction to you know, how Cisco's positioned vis-a-vis -a, -vis a big trend coming that we talked about in Barcelona at uh, Cisco Live in Europe, which was this concept of network operations. What DevOps did for cloud by making an abstraction layer, by making infrastructure as code make the cloud work. You're seeing network as code where with Istio and containers kind of as a North Star, you're seeing that path. You're seeing a Cisco well positioned, but again, Cisco customers are dealing with a lot of things. Some stats from the keynote, I'll just say a few. 50% um, of all traffic is encrypted. 70% of all bad actor traffic is encrypted. Okay, so 30% is unencrypted, still tons. Um, 20 billion threats are being blocked a day. That's 228 threats per second over the network. Massive scale. So Cisco, it's not like they're sitting around twiddling their thumbs saying, hey, let's be cloud native. I mean, they got real issues. They're running networks. They're trying to create a reinvention of the network. So you got the software-defined data center, you got the notion of security, this kind of scale. How is Cisco positioned vis-a-vis -vis some of those dynamics with the path towards some of that goodness around Kubernetes, uh, containers, and service meshes like Istio? Yeah, and John, that's one of the things, really some retraining of the workforce, because network is really about operators for the most part. They, they, they architect things, they operate things, uh, but how many of them are really the, the developers? Well, 500,000 are registered, and, and on this platform, you know, how many of them are moving to them, that, that new environment, and how many are new people entering the workforce? So we are seeing a major transition, major workforce transition here. Uh, Cisco is addressing it, uh, you know, I love when, I'm sure you saw, when you walk in past registration, there's this giant bookstore, and this is still the type of audience that, you know, they're super excited to get all of these books, they're, they're, they're going to train, they're going to learn, uh, I saw lots of people uh, talking about coming to the show as to you know, what they're going to get certified on. Uh, they like to meet the authors. They like to get involved. And that's something that this community has been really good at. Uh, it's sharing of information, learning information. Uh, and if they do that, they should be ready to be able to take advantage of some of these new trends. The other thing that I want to get your thoughts on is Chuck Robbins, the CEO of Cisco, kind of said the old way, which is essentially network architecture as we know it, um, with the perimeter and whatnot, firewalls, is essentially dead. He didn't say that, I'm saying that, but I'm implying from you know, him saying, this is how we did it in the old way, and here's the new way, here's the modern era, here's what networks should look like, and obviously they have a lot of stuff on their product portfolio as well as their roadmap to address that. Okay, check. So let's talk about the role of the Cisco network engineer, the customer. In the old ways too, the network guys really ran the show. They were the, the top talent, they had to lock down, do a lot of branch office, run all the major packets through the networks. This was critical path, this was, these, they were the aces. They were the creme de la creme. So now in the face of that kind of going away, you have automation. Certainly their jobs aren't going to go away because like you said, I mean there's a lot, of do, a lot to do in the cloud. How do network engineers, in your opinion, I know you talked to a lot of practitioners, become that, stay, stay as that tier one resource as DevOps now is mainstream, as programmable networks become more of the norm with the DevNet, DevNet Create, with the multi-cloud, what does that network engineer become? Who do, who, what, what's their persona in the future reinventing the network? What's your, what's your view on that? Yeah, but by the way, I loved when Chuck Robbins put up and he said, here's the old way. He's like, well, really for most people, this is kind of the, the way of today. And it, this transition is going to be a little bit painful, John. You know, how do we get to this new environment? How do we keep moving forward? Uh, you know, absolutely, John, you know, the traditional firewall, you know, we can no longer build the moat. Security needs to be everyone's job. A great line I love that I, I've, I've seen in the last year is security is not a product, it is a practice because it needs to be something that happens, you know, from the application side all the way down uh, to, to the people that, that, that are doing the hardware. So, uh, I, I've talked to a number of customers. John, I was at a, at a great little regional event in Boston last week and the CIO said, you know, 
Two years ago, I reported to the CFO, now I report to the CEO, because the role in, in companies that are doing it right, you know, lots of ways you can organize things, but the IT is not a cost center. We know that it needs to be tightly tied to the business, and if it's not working on things that drive the business forward, allow us to leverage data, allow us to take advantage of some of these new things, yep. you know, agility, uh, all of these things, um, I, I can, I'm just going to you know, get rid of IT and go find some way to be able to get it from somewhere Well, this else. is a dialogue we want to keep going. Also, you can follow us on Twitter. We're going to continue to talk about it. What is that role of that network engineer um, in, the, in the new world so that become tier one? Diane Green had a great quote, and she said, um, when pressed by the CEO of Cisco to kind of summarize kind of Kubernetes, all this stuff, what it means for the audience, she said, huge productivity gains and the best way to run applications in a very consistent, scalable way. So you could say, in the old days, Network guys moved packets around and said, I'm done, everything's secure, I'm going to go, go to lunch, I got my beeper, now my cell phone. Now it's not moving packets, it's moving applications. So you're seeing the movement up the stack is happening now, that's my kind of sense. You're, you, do you agree? Is that something that you see as where this is going? John, absolutely. You know, networking doesn't go away; it becomes even more important. You know, I, I go back, John. Even think about the XSPs back in the '90s. The reason that many of those models failed is it was like, oh, and network and security. Some of the biggest challenges we have in mobility and cloud are it's network and security. So, does Cisco and all of these network engineers? They're going to have jobs. They might be going to some new places. They absolutely need to learn some new skills. But network and security, uh, you know, front and center for many of the ecosystems that we look at and uh, good reason why we're here. And the other thing I think sisters has got another feather in their cap potentially with the new model is the role of this, where the security plays in the architecture. Certainly it's a practice, a feature of everything, but if you look at the opportunities at the network layer and at the firmware layer, at the chip layer, we're going to be at Google Next this summer for the Cube live broadcast there. You know, I'm expecting to see security getting pushed down way in the stack, becoming native in the flow and using that with policy with, with Kubernetes would be interesting. Security is still an open book, certainly an opportunity for Cisco. Uh, it's, it's an opportunity for everyone right now, John. We okay. still haven't solved that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the Cube coverage here in Orlando, Florida for Cisco Live 2018. We got three days of exclusive wall-to-wall -wall coverage, some great interviews. We're going to hear from the CMO for Cohesity tomorrow on the heels of their huge news. It's going to put uh, a whole new level of scale with storage and you know, converge infrastructure devices together and how that all plays. Of course, we've got a great lineup from developers, DevNet, uh, folks, Susie Wee, and a lot of bunch of top executives at Cisco and their customers here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Be back more with live coverage. Stay with us here in Orlando, Florida after this short break. <laughs>